Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Here's. I'm here. Pastor Dean is here. over here. Pastor oh. Dean, yes. We're in our little spot <laughs> this morning. What is the date? I have Cinco de Mayo. Okay. First Wednesday of May. I like it. So I got to share something funny with you. After the staff meeting, we have staff meeting at nine. And when it was done, I quick run to the bathroom. We all scatter for the bathroom before we come back and sit here. So here I am in the bathroom and I took out my little makeup purse and it's like, oh no. I discovered my little Equate breath strips package. I must not have closed it correctly the last time. I w we were using these again because we're not always having masks on. <laughs> so I must have used one Sunday morning. I had how many? I had probably 23 of these little breath strips, if you know what I mean, all through my little makeup purse. If they get damp, they get sticky. So here I am trying to pick them all out, trying to put them in the garbage can. They were getting stuck on the garbage can. Some of them flew off onto the toilet. <laughs> That's what I was spending my time doing before I sat down here. Literally, it emptied one whole package. Anyway. <laughs> So this morning, I want to start by sharing the things he's given us richly, all things to enjoy, 1 Timothy 6, 17, and some things that just gave me and Steve uh, joy. We were enjoying the moment. It was, um, and this is typical on different sun, uh, um, mornings that if we look out, we will see a pair of loons just swimming along Gall Lake. Sometimes it's rocky waves. Today it was a mirror. Like a mirror. Just beautiful. That gives us great joy. And then again this past week, um, watching Emerson, Asher, our grandsons, their two school friends and the two neighbor boys, Anthony and Brock, playing ball in our front yard. I mean, they're serious about it. <laughs> love it. We love it. And then the last thing that gave me such great joy, well, it made me laugh. One morning, I got up and looked out the window to the lake, and it was a weird looking thing, kind of white, I thought it can't be one of the grandkids swim toys because they aren't in the water swimming yet. But it was pretty big and all of a sudden pop up comes the neck of a trumpeter swan. It had had the neck down um, getting its food. It was ducking. It was ducking. Ducking the swan. <laughs> But it was so funny how it looked when its head was missing. But anyway, that made me smile. But then I thought, trumpeter swans. And so I Googled it. They can grow to be four and a half feet long, up to 35 pounds. And this is what is interesting. In the um, winter months in Minnesota, they go to the power plants where there's open water and abundant food supply. Mm -hmm. And so in those different places, people go to, in the middle of the winter, to watch trumpeter swans, which I didn't really know. But this was also interesting. Um, in the 1880s, trumpeter swans disappeared from our state because they had been hunted for their meat, skin, and feathers. 
Isn't that interesting? And in the 1930s, there was less than 70 in the entire United States. Now there are more than 25,000 trumpeter swans just in Minnesota. Really? There, so that's the one that was almost extinct? Huh? Yes, yes. And in, for them to come back to Minnesota, they had to, what do you call that? Bring them here and reintroduce them. So anyway, <laughs> we enjoy those beautiful trumpeter <laughs> swans. So what I want to share with you today, first of all, we thank you, Father, for your deep, deep, refreshing, renewing, restoring. We just breathe you in, Holy Spirit, anew and afresh in a deep way to our core to our soul to our heart mind will emotions all of that you restore the joy of our salvation thank you lord the scripture and i shared this with pastor dean and i shared this with steve um earlier too it's i this is something i from my journal again Usually when I share, it's something that I have in my journal from days before or the week before. This is Isaiah 53, 4. Surely Jesus has borne our griefs. In the Hebrew, that sicknesses, pain, distresses, grief, weaknesses, anxiety, and anguish. And carried our sorrows. There again, it means anguish, grief, and sadness. Verse 3 says, Jesus, a man of sorrows, was acquainted with grief. And this is from a few <coughs> days ago. But that particular morning in my quiet time, I was feeling it so deep. I was, and it wasn't my grief. It wasn't my anguish or anxiety. I was just feeling I was feeling for others and I was wanting them to know that Jesus understands them um, wanting them to know they weren't alone in what they were feeling and then the cross reference there's um, Hebrews 4 15 in the Amplified says Jesus sympathizes and understands with our weaknesses because he was tempted in all points as we are yet without sin he Jesus knows exactly how it feels to be human and even now when I read that I feel the emotion of that how important that is that we understand that Jesus understands us. We're all going through stuff. It may be physical, mental, emotional. It may be frustration. It, it may be whatever. Something that would be seem so minute and small to someone else, but to you and me, it's big. And um, the Message Bible, for Hebrews 4 15 says Jesus has been through weakness and testing having experienced it all but without sin living Bible says for that verse Jesus understands our weaknesses and that's been my prayer not just this morning for you but in these last days i just want others to understand jesus deep love and then um and i think pastor dean might have something more to share to this we were talking before we started doing this live but this morning i woke up 
with the words of an old, I think it's a hymn, you'd call it a hymn. John W. Peterson wrote it 1952, so it's not an ancient hymn. But no one understands like Jesus. And so I went to my bookshelf, my music books, and um, I knew it was in a blue one. And it's my mom's. It's my mom's blue celebration hymnal. Her name's in it. And the words are, no one understands like Jesus. He's a friend beyond compare. Meet him at the throne of mercy. He is waiting for you there. No one understands like Jesus when the days are dark and grim. No one is so near, so dear as Jesus. Cast your every care on him. And so what I did, because I didn't have mom's grandma gleanings in the house, I brought it along yesterday when we were traveling to Bemidji and I read Steve, the devotional for that day and I still have to find it. It wasn't, anyway, I thought, okay, I don't have mom's devotional. I'm gonna go to mom's piano, my mother's piano and I'm going to play this hymn and sing it. And so I did that, but when I opened it up, I just like, oh, it's in five flats. <laughs> I can remember, my mom was my music teacher as my sisters, Connie, Sharon, and Beth, no, she gave us all lessons. Um, five flats, I remember telling my mom, why do I have to learn five flats? I learned four flats, I could, I could do that, but five flats made me uncomfortable. So here it is. I thought to myself, I thought I remember it was written in the key of C. No flats, no sharps, not this version. So I thought I can do this. I mean, I haven't played five flats. <laughs> for how long so I did I started and I actually you know I made errors different place uh, but I went through all four verses but I'll tell you if you're a penis the very last what do you call that Stranger. whatever that last part cast your every care on him this John W. Peterson this version put in some really challenging but beautiful chords. So anyway, I, but when I and when I thought I was sitting there, I can do this. I remembered yesterday at work, Sarah and I were working at our Red Umbrella thrift store because we're going to be open this weekend again. And I was taking my little lunch break again with V and M dried beef and cheese. And um, I didn't have the same little card I usually keep in my pocket, but I looked up on the shelf and I had a newer one. Then I remembered, I wrote this a year ago before the pandemic started, when it was after the new year and I just felt I was supposed to start really, uh, doing things upstairs, taking care of business upstairs, where my art room is, storage room, and the kids' toy room. I mean, painting where it needed to be painting, putting floor trim, finishing things. You remember when we did that? But um, I didn't feel like it. And so I remember this scripture uh, I wrote on this card, and this is what it says. 2 Corinthians 8, verses 10 and 11, the Message Bible. The best thing you can do right now, Joyce, is to finish what you started. Because we had started upstairs many years before. Joyce, your heart's been in the right place all along. You've got what it takes to finish it up. So go to it. 
do what you can, not what you can't. And that really helped me. I remember during those days, and I painted for months, and then when we were shut in, I had already started the project, so I had a lot more time to focus on it. But then I had written, what I start, I will complete. So I'm reading this card yesterday, sitting by the office table at Red Umbrella. And I, I look at it, underneath me was one great big huge tub of more fabric. I've been the one, Sue has worked in the times past folding all those pieces, what wasn't taken or wanted or whatever, I had brought it to Red Umbrella. So I've been working lots of fabric. Um, very inexpensive prices on the things that we have out there. But I have one more tub sitting under my feet. I didn't want to do it. I was tired of doing it, but when I read this card, I finished it. What I start, I will complete. I've got a scripture maybe that will help him get it. I know you have something. Oh, it fell down. I'm sorry. We're transferring here. Listen up. <laughs> I was going to use this in my blessed life moment, but Proverbs 16, 3, and it says, roll your works upon the oh, Lord. Yes. And that word roll is pretty amazing. It means roll. <laughs> <laughs> and so we just push them over on the Lord. But then Amplify, or I think it's Amplify, commit and trust them wholly to him. But this phrase, he will cause your thoughts to become agreeable to his will. And so shall establish your your plans be established and succeed. But as we commit our and all our works upon the Lord, he causes our thoughts to become agreeable to his will. That's good. And so he that's transformation, isn't it? That's yes. uh, inner change. And so that's how much he cares about mm -hmm. our everyday life. He's right there with us, even the little things. And, yes. And uh, he's rejoicing with us. Yes. Amen. Yes, that is good. That is good. But I put it back, give it back to Pastor Dean again. He shared before we started doing this live about, and this is what I forgot to share, that I had the picture or an, an understanding that Jesus really understands everything. Having grown up here on earth, remember I shared that yeah. with you? And can you share more about you, what you were sharing with me? Well, just, you know, this is kind of not scripture verse, but yet just some ideas I've heard and things I've thought about that as he was growing up, you know, he was the elder son, so he had responsibility. As far as we know, we don't hear of Joseph anymore, so he could have died early. And Jesus had to take up that leadership in <clears throat> in the family. And even at the cross, he was looking to take care of his mother. And so a lot of those soulish things and just everyday things he had to face and work through and walk through. Yes. And he went through the stresses of life like we do. Yes. And so even in that, he was bearing. He was making a way for us. He became our substitute. Yes. Because he went through it perfectly, and he's there to help us. Yes. As you were sharing. Yes. Amen. Now, I'll share one last, I'll share one last thing about this. Um, again, going back to Isaiah 53 and really cockeyed here <laughs> and Hebrews 4 15 what Jesus experienced for us went beyond physical pain 
and carrying the weight of our sins. It was definitely mental and emotional also. A picture, picture him in the Garden of Gethsemane. But even before that, things he experienced in life, the normal daily living, normal day, he lived from day to day. He went to bed at night. He woke up each morning. Like Pastor Dean said, he had responsibilities. He had relationships, but um, uh, towards the end of his life, too, the thing of being betrayed by one of his own, Peter's denying him, one of his own, and then uh, he was rejected by people. There was hatred towards him. There was hypocrisy. There was, he experienced that, all that doubt, despair, anger, frustration, confusion, which came at him. And um, even after he resurrected from the dead, Thomas's unbelief. I mean, it's like, think of that to Jesus. I can't believe in you until, you know, so we need to be encouraged. He truly understands us. Amen. So why don't you read in prayer? So thank you, Father, by the revelation of you, Holy Spirit, working in each one of us. We thank you for that fresh, deep, real knowing that you, Jesus, understand <clears throat> us this very moment of our living what what's ahead the next hour the next day the next week the next month you understand you understand us and you're our helper that's why you gave us your holy spirit to live in us he's our personal helper that's how much you wanted to help us so we thank you father for the gift of holy spirit our personal helper in jesus name thank you lord amen well in just a moment we're going to go with pastor dean here for the blessed life moment but i'll have a few touch point items uh, for us today and there is some important information that you probably haven't heard all this um but um, this coming Sunday, Tim Pomp and his team, they'll be leading us in worship. Arliss Adamson will be bringing a blessed life moment. Uh, Joyce and I will be bringing a message from the Word. And there will be a lunch, lunch hosted by our TCC youth group on Sunday. No, it's Mother's or Day. No, we are. Okay, that's right. No, we correct that. Yeah, change that. There is nothing on Monday be or Sunday because we're expecting fathers and sons, whatever, to get moms home and treat them well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so anyway, I had that wrong on there, so we sent it out wrong, I guess. But anyway, we're, there will not be the lunch. And then the um, worship service will be live streamed. Just for your information there. Uh, and then here's something that's very important. Tomorrow is the National Day of Prayer. And I think Joyce is going to share with you some information that even goes beyond that and there's some things you can pick up on Sunday I think I'll let Joyce go on yeah. that some more thank you Lord we are faithful in praying for our nation we have resources here from Intercessors for America we have uh, three different kinds of brochures one of them is um, be the change that America needs 31 days of strategic intercession 
those are available. We have a prayer guide that has every U.S. official on for prayer, and then a different prayer guide, praying for the government prayer guide with scriptures. And so they'll be available here at the church. Right. So, and, and then, like I say, Thursday is National Day of Prayer, so let's be praying for our nation. And um, let's see here. One other thing that kind of goes along with that is, I know it's backwards, but it's the March for Jesus. Um, and that's on May 22nd, that's a Saturday. Um, at JW, the beginning point will be JW Smith Elementary in Bemidji, a gathering at 10 o'clock, and the march will begin at 11 o'clock, and it'll end up at Paul and Babe, and there'll be a rally there to lift up the name of Jesus. And so this is March for Jesus. My brother Tim is the leader of that, and so I just want you to be aware of that. It's a very great opportunity. And then also, uh, tonight, 6 o'clock here at the church house will be our youth group and there are, in our announcements that we've sent out, there are some special needs they have. If you have, <clears throat> have any of those items that you could give them, that would be great. Otherwise, um, you can give toward that as well when you, uh, as an offering. And by the way, this coming Sunday we are going to be receiving a special offering for Northwoods Pregnancy Center uh, that will be on Mother's Day here. Uh, and then tonight also at 6.30 is our TCC Kairos gathering. That's for adults. Uh, time of getting before the Lord in worship and prayer and so forth, getting in the Word. Pastor Dean has a Zoom Bible class on Thursday at 7.30 to let you know that. Um, and then also, Adam and Vicki have an announcement concerning their son Stephen will be graduating from Bemidji State University on Friday, May 7. And uh, we will be hosting a small reception open house for him at our home from 4 to 7 on that day. It's Adam and Vicki's home. Right. And uh, so that's at their place. <laughs> what did I say? Yeah. Don't Vicky. show up at our house. It's that, at their house. Did I say it was at our house? <laughs> yeah, it sounded that way. Uh, uh, so you're invited to come by and give them your congratulations and eat a bite of cake. <laughs> If you have questions, call 218-214-2932 if you need directions. Said that. All right. Very good. And uh, at this point, <laughs> Pastor Dean, you're going to turn her. We'll keep you on the ball here too, Pastor Dean. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so today I just want to mention a few things. You know, we we talk about you know, this is kind of focused on finances and a lot about giving and sowing and opening our hearts to, re to receive the blessing back from God. But also we need to be aware that many times the way that, that he brings blessing back to us is other people coming alongside to help us. And so we need to learn how to be receivers and not only givers. But along with giving and sowing, and you know hooking up with ministries and people the other side of the finances of course is that we work heartily at what God calls us to do and so we don't just sow and wait for a return we also have to apply our lives in this world to receive the blessings that uh, he desires and we've talked about this I think a few weeks ago but I just want to read some more scriptures along those lines Colossians 3.23, whatever may be your task, work at it heartily from the soul as something done for the Lord and not for men, knowing with all certainty that it is from the Lord 
and not from men that you'll receive the inheritance. And so, you know, uh, this has to do with our inner workings. We work at it heartily, and we see it as done uh, for the Lord and not for men. I've heard of people doing the dishes as unto the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and yeah. different things. But whatever we do, I mean, God wants to be involved in every part of our life. He wants us to see him involved and honoring him in every part of our life. And so that just promotes fellowship with his heart all the time. And then in Proverbs 14, 23, all hard work brings a profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. And so a lot of times we, we can talk about a lot of things, plans and future endeavors, but there comes a point where we have to step out if we feel that this is what God is calling us to do and actually put our hands to the task. And, you know, that takes a step of faith. There's a lot of times something we have to cross over. Mm -hmm. We put ourselves on the line with him and we test it. You know, we, when you're hearing the voice of God, is it line up with the word? Does it glorify Jesus? You know, but also that you give it the test of time. Something kind of doesn't leave you it just stays there and stays there and stays there as you're praying as you're worshiping God and so at, you know as we prove out these impulses of our heart there comes a moment that we need to step out and do it and trust the Lord and sometimes that takes a you know quite a step of faith mm -hmm. to cross over that line and then in Ecclesiastes 9:10 whatever your hand finds to do do it with all your might and so you know we don't sit around and just wait for the ultimate calling on our life we are involved whatever our hands find to do mm -hmm. we do it with all of our might and so that not only in the occupation but also in our service in the kingdom and in the church you know uh, we can have ultimately something in our heart that we believe that this is my my calling to serve the church, but it's not the time yet. So in the meantime, we just hook up wherever we can. Mm -hmm. Whatever our hands find to do, we do it. Yep. And we do it with all our might. And we just help support other people's vision and, and the work of the church. And then, you know, God will put us, he'll bring us to that place. Uh, where he has ultimately designed us to stand. I remember John Osteen back in the 80s, he said that there was a retired Air Force and he was maybe a colonel or somewhere up higher up in the in the system. He came to church, but he didn't, you know, he didn't know what he should do. He had some things in his heart, but he says, I know, I'll clean the commodes. Nobody wants to do that, so I'll oh. just do that. And he threw himself into that work, and within a few years, he was going around the world preaching Jesus in a whole mm. bunch of nations. And so, you know, we just do mm. what, you know, what we find to do with all our heart, and God will put us in the right place ultimately. We trust him. He's yes. faithful. In the Message Bible, Ecclesiastes 9.10, whatever turns up, grab it and do it, and heartily. And as I read earlier, you know, even if those things don't seem to be pleasant, if we trust our works to the Lord, he will cause our thoughts to become agreeable to his will. And so he can change, he can cause those things that don't seem to be joyful to be a real fulfilling part of our life. Mm -hmm. He will do it. And he is faithful. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. So. That's good. Goodbye, everybody. Okay, that's Bye. it. Bye. <laughs> <Blessing. laughs>